Hi, I'm Dr. Sarah Wasserbauer. Today we're going to talk about platelet-rich plasma injections with and without a cell and their effect uh, efficacy in my practice. Right there. So we wanted to know if our platelet-rich plasma injections were having any effect um, and if they worked to grow hair. When we started these treatments about five years ago, there was very little objective data available. So we chose to measure the progress of our patients using a hair check cross-sectional diameter device. After about four years, we had about 150 patients. <clears throat> so we conducted a retrospective chart review to determine how much of an improvement our platelet-rich plasma injections were having. We also used global photographs and patient self-assessment surveys, but the most objective data came from these cross-sectional diameter measurements. So here's a summary. We got complete data from 79 patients, 50 male patients, and 29 female patients. The average age of these patients was 45 years old. Now, just in case you're unfamiliar with hair check technology, I'm just going to demonstrate that this is a caliper device that allows you to take a sample of hair at a pre-measured area on your patient's scalp. You can re reproduce this measurement each time by measuring from a consistent anatomical point. In this case, it's the glabella right here. So much like going to the same acre of forest, these are numbered, much like going to the same acre of forest in your <clears throat> patient's forest of trees, taking all the trees and putting them into a bundle and seeing what the diameter is, you can track this over time, and this technology can assess how much wood is in your patient's forest of hair. This is not like a caliper measurement of a single hair or a density measurement. This is a combination. Both the amount of trees and the diameters of those original trees can be tracked, and you can see how they change over time. So the patient's hair needs to be at least an inch long to be able to do this. So basically what we did in the study was to see how much of an increase we can get in our patient's hair mass. And we were able to track that by location. We used three locations, the frontal area here, the frontal area, the uh, kind of midway point vertex or midbridge, and then the donor area or safe zone. This is a particularly nice way to do things because you don't have to worry about how your patient's hair is styled during photos and you can use the back of the head as a control because nothing is being ejected there. Plus, you can quantify the results like a 10% increase or a 20% increase. We also tracked the other therapies our patients were using, and we did global photographs. Um, we wanted to see if they were using finasteride, minoxidil. We let them use whatever they wanted to, but we tracked all the different things that they were using. If you would like to look at what how I uh, create my PRP, or how I add my A cell, uh, and we added 100 milligrams every single time. You can read that at the PDF that's also uploaded with this presentation. Our data demonstrated that 58% of our male patients had an increase in their hair mass with any of these injectable therapies with PRP, uh, with or without A cell. There was no significant decreases in hair mass and the other percentage. It was a less than 5% uh, uh, change in either direction. And the increase averaged 16 and a half in the frontal region. Now, if you added 100 milligrams of A-cell or matristem powder, the increase rose to about 20% in both the frontal area and the top. Probably it went a little bit further back because when you added the A-cell, uh, you ended up getting uh, a little bit more volume. <clears throat> so let me move myself out of the way here. Subgroup analysis was very interesting. It showed that adding additional therapies further improved the results even on top of what the PRP was doing. So if you are to uh, look at these, uh, if we had our original 50 patients and they get about a 20% improvement with the A cell, if you add uh, finasteride, you add an additional three and a half. Here's the finasteride. If you add uh, finasteride and Rogaine, you get an additional 9% improvement. And if you added low-level light therapy on top of all of those, you got an additional 13% improvement. So very interesting results. Now, in our 29 female patients, 72% of the female patients showed an increase in their hair mass of over 10%, which again was our cutoff. 
The other 28% of patients receiving these treatments, once again, were merely stable, not showing increase or decreased mass within the 5% margin of their original baseline hair mass measurements. Those who received PRP alone showed a roughly 25% improvement. Interestingly, uh, it was in the both the frontal and the midbridge areas. This is likely because the women had smaller heads. Uh, and this is all over a six-month period. However, if A cell was added, then the results were negligible, not even an improvement, less than 5%, about the same as if they hadn't done anything at all. So subgroup analysis was unfortunately rendered inaccurate because my numbers were too low in any particular category of the women taking finasteride, additional minoxidil, and using photobiomodulation. To uh, conclude, 58% and 70 of men and 72% of women have increases in their hair mass greater than 10% over baseline over a six-month period with platelet-rich plasma injections with and without a cell. The average increase in hair mass was 16 to 20% for males and 25% for females. The females did not get any additional benefit, and in fact, it could be argued got less of uh, got a detrimental result from adding a cell. The male subgroup analysis was very interesting, showing that finasteride, finasteride and minoxidil, and finasteride, minoxidil, and low-level light therapy, which is photobiomodulation, also increased their results over and above what the platelet-rich plasma injections were doing. Thanks for listening. I look forward to your questions.